with the Hermetic Kabbalah, it, it sort of uh, nests a lot of energy. So with that, you get to do a lot of things like billet reading, remote viewing, you know, plus dowsing, all your psychic abilities. And then later you get into the tarot, you know, and you study a lot of different systems, both Eastern and Western. So that's a little bit about myself there. And then once again, once you sort of switch this energy on, you don't seem to turn it off. So um, there's a lot of uh, energy that's been happening around at the moment. And we're going to be looking at some interesting uh, situations tonight. We've got um, keys for sale on the elements because um, meditating on the elements is very, very powerful for the foundation of, of your body. Even if you went to the Eastern schools, like if you're in Hindu or Taoism or uh, a, you know Shintoism or any of those sort of schools, um, even Buddhism, you'll still work with the elements, fire, earth, air, and water. So we have a key down there, it's a USB key. I'll talk about that at the end of the program. And then also we've just developed our new uh, USB key, which is the uh, planets. And each of these keys has meditations, like for the elements, you meditate on the fire, the earth, the air, the water and the ether. This actually integrates your physical body, your mental body and your astral body. Like tonight, we'll do a meditation to get everyone all sort of conducive. If you'd like, that way we're all on the same page. Um, once again, the planets, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that. But planetary meditations is one of the keys for us to actually uh, stimulate a lot of energy. People say, oh, you've got a really good mind or something like that. So we worked on meditating on planets. We've got to get a feel for it. And with that, you can understand a lot of different cultures, you know, like from Norse to Sumerian to Egyptian to Celtic to Aztec, Mayan, whatever. But that way you really get an understanding. People say, oh, can you use this in a day-to-day -day way? I do because I can use it. I, I have my own philosophies on things and I'm not sort of dominated by religions or, you know, governmental systems and things. You seem to be able to sort of flow through it. Okay, so without further ado, Pallades, Sirius and Orion are quite some powerful systems uh, in our culture. I don't know how many of you feel or know that you're star children or you're star beings, and that's what we look at, that we're actually made up of stardust and, you know, our planet Earth is, is quite significant at this time. We call it the third rock from the sun. So setting out from our sun, our solar star, and that's why it's really important to meditate on the sun, you learn that it's a star and it has a solar system and we're actually made up of that. We have chakras. We'll look at them a little bit tonight just before we get into our, our main talk. So that these chakras are like energy wheels or electromagnetic conducers or, and they work beyond um, the three dimensions, okay? They work into fourth and fifth dimensional consciousness, okay? So some of you probably get massive downloads when you're working with high energies or, you know, something like you'll see like pentagram, six-point star, seven-point star. What is the meaning of of this symbology as well. So hopefully we're going to touch on this tonight. Obviously the Pleiades is uh, relevant to ancient cultures. Um, is that all right if you use the laser so I don't have to point it there, I can use that bomb. So Pleiades, Sirius, part of Canis Major and Orion, okay? So we're just stepping outside the zodiac. Those whole planets are actually, funnily enough, right in the sky out there right now. It's just going on the horizon. So Sun um, is just moving into Taurus, okay? but. Actually, it's still in the Vedic, it's still in Aries. So Aries is on the rise and so where Aries is going down, that 30 degree constellation, just going over the rise and the sun is being affected. So our whole solar system is being affected. So those suns have got a lot of power, they've got a lot of grunt and they're growing our sun our sun is growing through those constellations, those zodiac constellations, like brothers and sisters and like aunts and uncles. That kind of makes sense. We're on the same page there. All right. And these systems here are just out. So things have changed a bit. So Pleiades is part of the Taurus system. I don't know if you know that. We'll look at that. Sirius is part of what's called Canis Major. And there are ancient cultures that are very strongly related to this. And Orion, of course, is related to a race that was once around the Aryans or the, you know, the Aries beings. That was prior to um, the Christians. See, we hit now in this age where at the moment is Aquarius. Now, 2,000 years ago, we were moving to the Christian age. It goes backwards, it goes retrograde, um, I mean, through the signs. That's, uh, that was the Piscean age, you know, the age of the fishes. Before that, we had the Ramses, Egyptian, those kind of gods. There. So that's the age of the Ram, going back into Aries, you know, the kickoff. Normally, with normal astrology, you go, you know, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, as it progresses that way, you know, into Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, as it were. 
Scorpio, Sagittarius, <laughs> I can't help myself. All right, exactly. So you go back. So before the Aryan age, you had the age of Taurus. So you see a lot of the bullheaded or the bull worship and things like that, you know, Minos, the Minotaur, Crete and all around there. I will focus mainly on the Mediterranean, otherwise I'll get too cosmic for you. And, um, you know, we don't want to do that. We'll blow your shacks. And um, we don't want to do that today or tonight. Actually, why not? Okay. Okay. Why, why? You worked before. Why do you do this to me now? Is that, yes. Okay, yes. Fantastic. Correct. Okay. Um, we're just looking at this here. Actually, this is actually a, a, an absolute picture on the horizon. Obviously, that, that building is not there, but that's actually what's going on there. And I'll just point that out to you. No way, Mr. Laser. Okay, cool. We can't, we can't use the laser out of the sky because we're in a flight path. <laughs> That's another one, Michael. You like that? So here we are. This is Sirius here. It's the brightest sun in our sky. It's the brightest, not the closest. Sirius A. There's two stars to that, but we'll get into it. Sirius, and it's part of this system here. It's like a T-shape is Canis Major. And it sits just out here. This is um, the, the actual zodiac, which is Taurus, and this is Orion, which you probably would remember when you were children as the saucepan, you know, the big dipper, that kind of shape? Yeah, all right. No, so there's some really powerful stars in there, and we'll, we'll get to look at them. And also the belt of Orion is really important. And when Orion faces Taurus, all right, Taurus. And up here we have this jewel box here, which is called the Pleiades. Okay, the Pleiades is here, seven sisters. Just about every major culture on the planet talk about these seven sisters, you know, more or less. And you can go from the Origines here, you can go to the Norse, you can go to the Netsilic, the uh, Navajo, Cherokee, Mayan, I don't care where you go on the planet. You can go to, you know, the Zulu, they'll have something that they have to say about these particular stars and that our ancestors came from the Pleiades, okay? Just in front here, this is the this is the head of the bull, all right? It's the horns of the bull. See that A shape there, all right? That is um, Taurus's uh, horns, and it's charging at Orion, all right? Just out from here, um, I think we we got um, yeah Aries, and then but there's another two which make the nine, which is the mother and the father of the actual the daughters, okay? And uh, we'll move into that. All right, just to sort of. Um, have a look at this, I, I'd like you to have a, a shot. So to stimulate our mind, we've now got a lot of electromagnetic fog, EMF we call it, okay, from a lot of, you know, like even as I'm speaking now, there's wireless information going on there, carbon monoxide, you, the radio waves, you have a lot of that kind of energy. So we need to start wearing some protection around that. So, and also we can work that with, um, excuse me, I'll just go back there. Boomski, okay, boom, okay. So we want our mind and our energy to be clean, you know, so various stones are quite good and various metals are very good for you as well. The main stones we're working with are now, of course, I, I recommend this for a lot of holistic healers and people that work with vibratory energy, if you're in a psychic or a reader, uh, those sorts of stones, so black tourmalines and uh, things such as obviously your quartzes, rose quartz is obviously loving, but the big one we're working now with is shungite. It's really good for water and it's very easy to clean. It, it comes from Russia and it probably might become a little bit more scarce, but it's good to have around, it cleans. It's very good for balancing waters. So things like water and air, you know, you want to be in that clear so that your mind is clear because our mind, you know, well, if we lose our neck, we've got three main chakras there, the throat, the third eye, you know, the Ajna, and then, of course, the crown chakra. So you want that clear energy running through your being, you know, so if you're going to tap into a lot of energy. So I'll just have a quick look at that, that you look at seeing yourself you know, you have neurons around you, but also around your body, you have an energy field or a series of energy fields. And this is like what you're called your aura. So you have a physical aura, a mental aura, an astral aura, and of course your spirit itself. We usually work with the four bodies. It just simplifies it. So fire, earth, air, and water. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, if I'm talking too fast, that's just the way I am, okay. <laughs> okay, slow down, all right, slow down. 
All right, this is the way we wire it up. So if we're looking at our, I suppose, our lymphatic and our nervous system, that's how our chakra system works. So it's a, like a electromagnetic, but it's actually more than that. And that's the way our soul kind of works. It's just a beginning map for how you, you're mapping out your soul. Your soul is your astral body. Does everyone kind of get that? It's your personality, your character. Your soul memories are really important. Like, you know, the first time you kiss, your first car, the first time you dated, the those kind of memories, you know, you know, remembering your mother or something at school, they're soul memories as opposed to mental memories. Because the average person has about 30 to 50,000 thoughts a day. And most of those thoughts mean zip. You know, who cares what the last politician said? You know, it doesn't mean nothing, you know, who cares, you know? Rah, 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 you know. <laughs> okay. Whereas things that have happened thousands of years ago seem to be quite significant to us, you know, these ancient monoliths and megaliths. So we're just looking once again, the seven chakras, and there are more energy centers, of course. You've got your hands, they open up as you attune. It's like burning. Everyone felt that if you were a healer, or, you know, it feels like it's burning, you know, it's like light burning through here. These chakras, your hands do ridiculous amounts of energy uh, work as well. Soles of your feet, too, are really important. Um, as I say, I, I want to stress this before we get into the uh, into the whole night's class. To ground, you want to open those soles of your feet up. You know, walk on the beaches, walk on grass. You know, take that in. You know, and also Mother Nature reads you. Ninety percent of those weeds out there are actually holistic medicines. I'm not kidding. You know, that is, herb law has been around since you know way before the Wiccan, yeah, but Wiccan's always been around anyway. So that kind of nor normal uh, normalization that we've got through now, we're, we're blaming. Um, or we've been tied into Big Pharma, you know, and, you know, the little farmer's been crushed. But um, Big Pharma's got this whole um, monopoly on things at the moment. So anyway, just a quick overview. We can just have a look at this little meditation before we get into tonight's class. I feel it helps and it gets the group together, you know, but not in a, a weird way or anything, just <laughs> so we're together, okay? So once again, you know this is your base chakra, okay? And this is, um, of course, your, your navel your solar plexus, your heart, um, this is your throat, third eye, Ajna. Once again, this is why I did your pineal pituitary gland, okay, that, that complex in the middle of your mind. That's why it's good to be important, be clean energy. And of course, the crown chakra. There are other chakras, but it's well beyond the scope of tonight's class. So, you know, if you looked at the root chakra, it's red, like a red apple. You know, the base of your spine, it has particular abilities. And then, of course, you went to the navel base, you know, your, your birth through the navel canal, you know, but no, your belly button. So you're connected through, you know, your through your mother's line, you know, through your bloodline, through, of course, the, um, uh, the, the navel, I caught navel base. I call it the navel base. <laughs> exactly. The umbilical cord, all right? So you're being fed. So that blood is, you know, or that's, uh, it's a phenomenal connection to, to your bloodline and your ancestral line as well. So it's okay. Uh, so obviously these are just um, the Indian uh, Sanskrit as we go through it. You don't have to know that, but if you want to, that's fine. I'm sure there's a, there's a chart of them around here somewhere. Okay. Solar plexus. Okay. It's to gold. Okay. It's, navel is to orange. Solar plexus is to gold, all right? That's your solar plexus just below your ribs there. Solar, soul, sun, soul. Your heart is to love, very important chakra, all right? Your heart, and it's separate to your, your physical heart. Your physical heart pumps, you know, like a ridiculous amount of blood through your physical body. But the, the love of your heart is actually wired into universal love, you know, kindness and that. You don't need a religion to tell you that. You know, you, if you, you care for animals, you care, you're, you're a loving, kind person. So practicing that is good. Throat chakra, very underestimated, okay? That's your communication, okay? Top of the male pillar, okay? To, to Saturn in Kabbalistic energy, okay? Um, Communication is important. It's particularly um, when you're copying energy, you need to protect this throat chakra. Sore throats and things. Usually blue or green stones. I usually go blue stones. You get sapphires or some tricked up blue stones. You know, I mean, tanzanites if you can afford them or whatever. But blue, you know, so that, that's just how you wire your body up. You know, particularly with sapphires, they're pretty good. They've got some pretty powerful energy, you know. Any of those um, high-end stones, they're good. Um, intuition, of course, um, to your third eye, your ajna, top of the female pillar. Eve's eye opens first in the old language, so your third eye opens. We'll be talking about that and uh, why the Egyptians 
you know, have it in their sarcophagi and things like that as well, certain stone. And of course, your spirituality to your crown chakra. And then of course, you know, all the rest of the chakras up after that. But, but that's like the multi-headed or lotus, as it were, thousand petaled lotus. So you, you're wearing, you know, like you access all areas then, you know. So when you get those massive downloads, you know, you, you know, something or you read a book and it's like, oh, wow, check this out. So, all right, cool. So this would be Ra or Ra, oh, no, so this would be Lamb, Vam, Ram, Yam, <laughs> Ham, Sham. Um, would you like to do that? Would you like to go through those chakras? You don't have to voice them out in case you, but you know, we're not, we're not singing for the nightclubs here, but I just, it's a good way to get together. And that way you can carry it with you. It's my gift to you guys. You can take that anywhere you want, you know? Okay. Would you like me to take you through that? Okay, yeah, okay. So imagine now like you move your consciousness, okay? Like you send your conscious mind down to your root chakra, like the base of your spine. So boom, down here, near the coccyx sort of thing. Okay, cool. All right. And then we're just going to go through it. I'll just talk you through it. You cool? Okay. Okay, cool. This is um, pretty much basic with most of the um, ancient cultures. It's a nice, clean, simple one. Seven colors of the rainbow. Great stuff. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay, so just relax and close your eyes. If you want to meditate with your eyes open, that's all cool. That's how we have to do it as teachers anyway. So... All right, so I'll just take you through it. So base chakra, just imagine like a red glowing light and it's gonna work through all your bodies, your physical, mental, astral. It's like a red glowing light, you know, like you can see it envelop you. Just boom, like you're a red apple or a red star, something like that. Nothing to be afraid of, you're just gonna burn up a lot of negative vibes. That's all you're gonna do, bring in the pause, all right? Oh, okay, thank you very much. So just. Nice deep breaths, get that air in, air is of the gods. First thing you do when you bring yourself to this world is you take a breath of air. Nice deep breaths, calm, relaxing through the nose, through the mouth. Just focus on you now, this is important, all right? Get to really know you, all right? Very important. It's for you, it's your gift. Nice deep breaths. Now bring your consciousness down. We're just going to think of ourselves as a nice big red sun or a red apple enveloping our whole being, all that life force. Here we go. First sound, if you don't want to voice it, that's okay, but I'm going to sing it through, is la. La. Uh... 